Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today we're in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, in front of the cave from the Lost Boys. Welcome to Horrors Hallowed Grounds. Ready? Yeah. Action. I still believe! Yeah! Yeah! Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today we're in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, in front of the cave from the Lost Boys. Welcome to Horrors Hallowed Grounds. One, two, three, four! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Horrors Hollow Grounds. Got a little bit of a backstory on this episode before we get started. So I first visited these locations here in Santa Cruz about 20 years ago. It's been that long. And back in 2009, Corey Haim was a good friend of mine. And we actually discussed doing this together. He was gonna co-host the episode with me in Santa Cruz. All the other locations I were gonna do on my own, but he was gonna come to Santa Cruz with me and we were gonna do this together. Well, I started shooting it, did the cave stuff, which you'll see in this episode, this is from 2009. But then unfortunately, as you all know, Corey passed away at a young age, untimely death, it was a tragedy. And I just didn't feel it was right to do this without him. Well, it's been 10 plus years since he passed away, and I felt like, you know, maybe it's time I finally just put this one in the books. So anyway, Corey, this one's for you, man. And also, Brooke McCarter, who was also a good friend. This is also dedicated to him as well. Love you guys. The camera comes from this direction over the roller coaster. Aerial shot heading toward this parking lot. You can see these two like dividers here on the entrance. Those are still there today. These concrete, like, I don't know if you would call them planters, I guess. And heads this way in you know what is eerily similar to the way this parking lot looks right now but his car is parked over here let's see we're gonna go to that exact spot cry little security guard it wasn't a little security guard though he was a little portly i'm not fat shaming right about here is where his car was This spot here, you can see, came from that direction over there.
It's, wow, it's amazing how tiny this lighthouse looks in person. Santa Cruz Surfing Museum. Right here is where the Santa Carla sign sat. Today there's a statue in its place. Should be a statue of David or Michael, the savior of Santa Carla, but no, it's just some surfer guy. This ride is no longer there, it's been replaced by this, but they do still have one of these rides in the amusement park. Today it's called the Cyclone, it's more of an updated version, but it looks like it's straight out of Killer Clowns. This is where Corey Haim comes running with Nanook, right over here to where this little shop used to be. It's no longer there now. Today, it's the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Exploration Center. Wow, that's a mouthful. I personally like the Fun Food Shack better. The dead giveaway about this location is that bridge up there. You can still see it there today, with cars passing by. Just across the street is the Dream Inn. Now at the time of filming The Lost Boys, this was another hotel. It was called the Coast Santa Cruz Hotel. This side right here has been renovated and they've added a Jack O'Neill's restaurant. Otherwise, the building is pretty much the same as it was in the 80s. Now right here, this was the location of the Fun Food Shack. Pretty much in this spot right here. Kind of crazy. Now you head down this way and we're going to go to the point where the trampoline was and the dumpster. Check it out, right over here by those pipes. That's where you see Corey go and help these two homeless people out. We're going to say they're homeless. They're just hippies, but you know what I mean. And Nanook threw in a little too. The dog was a giver. So pretty much kind of where these pipes were is probably roughly where the dumpster would have been. Now we're on the boardwalk. There's the old pirate ship. Still looks the same today. Various games on the boardwalk. And of course, the market with the whale sticking out of the side. See that building in the background was just being built. There it is, all finished today. As you can see, the lifeguard towers have changed. This is the new number one. Some more opening credit spots. Right here is where the punker was standing. This gate has completely been changed. But you can see down the street, if you look up there, you'll see that the power lines still match up till this day. Right there. Now this is where the girl is walking past this building. It has been extended. See how it ends there by that window? It's been extended a little bit, as you can see. But the building next to it is still the same, just painted yellow now. And of course, the classic roller coaster, the Cyclone. Now, the caveman that you see sitting here has been changed. That's not the same one, but it's cool that they still put it in the Skyway for fans to check out. Well, now let's go down this hill and head to Grandpa's house.
So here we are at the Poganip. This was grandpa's house in the Lost Boys. It's been, you know, empty for decades and fenced around. You can't get any closer than this. The Poganip was built in 1910 as the Casa del Rey Golf and Country Clubhouse. It closed in 1930 and then reopened in 1935 as the Poganip Polo Club. In 1936, with proceeds from a film shot there, they built a swimming pool, which was filled in in 1986. I believe this is where they built Grandpa's garage over where the pool used to be. It closed down during World War II and was used briefly as a rehabilitation area for servicemen. It reopened in 1948 with non-equestrian sports like bicycle, polo, and tennis, as well as hosting social events. In 1986, the clubhouse was condemned, oddly enough the same year they shot Lost Boys there, but club members expressed interest in restoring it. However, this never took place, and the clubhouse was further damaged in the 1989 earthquake. The club disbanded in 1993 after a failed attempt to raise funds to restore the clubhouse to its landmark status, and in 2010, the lease ended and the clubhouse reverted to city property. Today, it just stands there, although it has been restored from when I first visited there back in 2006. Now we'll just take a look around the property so you can see what this building looks like from all sides. Now on this side right here, this is where Sam's bedroom would have been. Now you might notice this looks similar here. I'm not sure if they really did that outside of the real house or if they faked this on a sound stage. It does look like the real house. So that would have been right there that that scene was shot. Now outside this is where Nanook would have been tied up. Right here where that gate is. This whole area was dressed like a walkway, as you can see where they run out to try to save Nanook. Would have been this whole area right here. Now out here is where Nanook would have been playing with the horses. You can see the background pretty much looks exactly the same. Hasn't changed too much. Very beautiful field. Now here, this is a set. The entire interior of Grandpa's house was a set at Warner Brothers Studios. And you can see here by this call sheet provided by Alex Winter that it was shot on stage 15 at Warner Brothers Studios. Here, behind this building, is where the stage used to be. This is where the I Still Believe performance happened. You can see the bit of the stairs there. And if you can see around this building, you can see the background as referenced in this photo from the 70s, where you can see the whole thing, the distance there. So, the stage was literally right here. And when people are watching, they were standing on these steps. When you see Star watching and she's looking at Jason Patrick, AKA Michael, she's standing on one of these steps. I'll go down here, take a look, and you can see what I mean. In this area behind Lifeguard Tower number three, and he keeps looking back at her standing amongst the crowd on these very stairs. Yeah. You don't believe me? Well, I still believe. I still believe.
now we're in front of the Bay Company, which was Max's video store in the movie The Lost Boys. And right in here is where she goes in and asks for a job. And ends up working here with a very young Kelly Jo mentor from summer school and people under the stairs. She has a brief appearance in this film. It's closed right now, but I may come back tomorrow when it's open and take a look inside. We'll head inside. And suddenly, boom, it's the next day. Obviously now it's just a novelty type gift shop for Santa Cruz. But was it ever a real video store? I have no idea. But pretty much the layout of the store is the same. If you look at the ceiling, that's pretty much as it is in the film as well. Walking around, observing, I then notice something. The countertop that they're working at, the counter they're working behind, it's still there. Check it out. See right here? Kelly Joe Mentor sitting behind. It's the same one. Take a look at the woodwork at the bottom. Now look at this scene here. Exactly the same. It's the same countertop. That is so cool. Little details like that always get me excited. And now we're heading to the restaurant. So this is where she gets the call. And has to go running out. Doesn't ever get to have dinner. Right here. Holy is. Now, if you like Mexican food and the Lost Boys, that's the table you want to be sitting at, because that's the one Max was sitting at. Right in that window right there. Right there is where he was sitting. Check it out. You can see the background there of the roller coaster. Exact same positioning. Windows the same. And he sees her leaving in the parking lot below. Yes, it is an upstairs restaurant. And that would have been right out there where he sees her taking off. See the host stand right here where it says Alita's? It says Sea Cloud. That's the very same one. Has not changed a bit. That's awesome. Michael and Sam follow Star in front of the haunted castle. The reason this looks different is because it's been completely renovated. Back in 2010, it reopened as part of a $9 million building makeover, $2 million of which went towards the haunted castle. Well, this is what it looks like today. But when you see them walking past it, it's the old gray building. But this is the route they would have taken, following her. Kind of creepily. A little stalkerish, you know, if you want to be real. But you see the, the gray arches and the gray brick. It's the old building before it changed. Now when Sam stops and Michael asks him, Don't you have something better you could do? And Sam says, Yeah. I think I do. Well, then it cuts to a completely different location, a comic book shop that was nowhere near the boardwalk. Check out the Laughing Sal in the background. Not likely the very same one we see at the comic book shop, but very coincidentally, they have one on display at the boardwalk. And these are very rare animatronics. So, kind of a coincidence. Right now I'm standing at 707 Lower Pacific Avenue and this was the location of the original comic book store. All they did is they put a wall, a fake wall out here to make it look like it was on the boardwalk. As you can see the space is very deep but not very wide. Just like you see in the film. Now here are some behind the scenes photos from the making of the film. And you can see the employees as well as the owner who appears right here inside the store back before it was destroyed and there's laughing sal again unfortunately it was destroyed during the earthquake and then they had to move to a new location which we will go see in just a moment here is the current location of atlantis fantasy world we're gonna go inside and check it out one thing you might notice when you go in the store are these magazine racks, the stands, if you will. They are exactly the same as they were back in the 80s. They have not changed at all. They just moved them into a new location. But it is pretty cool to see. 
They say that this Vampires Everywhere comic book they have on display was screen used. So if you go there, make sure you check it out for yourself. So right here is where the car was parked. Let's see in the background, the amusement park. I shot this before at night, but I wasn't really happy with the way it looked. You can see it's pretty dark and didn't really dig the way it looked, but this looks way better. This is just a short walk from the boardwalk. You just walk over there by the train track bridge that everybody thinks is the Lost Boys train track. Follow it up just around and here to the cliff. Pretty easy to find and a must see if you're a Lost Boys fan. Now we're going to look at a couple locations from a deleted scene. This is where Jason Patrick's getting his job on the beach. You can see this pathway going from the main street onto the boardwalk is still there, but that archway is gone. Now here's on the beach where he's working. See the hotel in the background hasn't changed too much. goes from this sign down here to where we watch Star and Laddie walk over here. This is where the motorcycles were parked. This building has been added around the carousel since the filming. Looks over, sees Michael walking over here. passes along this area. And David and the boys head off in this direction. Just to show you some more magic of editing, when Michael and Star are walking and you see David and the boys watching them, well they're watching them from this spot right here. But where Michael and Star are actually walking is really far away from this location. So remember where we started. That's where the bikes were parked, where they were supposedly watching Michael and Star. But the actual location where they were walking, way down there at the very end. But then it cuts to them on the other side, way down here is where it cuts to where they approach them, right where those people are. It's right here where Michael is getting his leather jacket looking himself in the mirror, and he starts to turn and go this way. Right about here is where the big banner for the vanishing girl is. And then he heads in this direction. Then cuts to right about here where he's watching the girl get her ear pierced. And Star walks up and tells him it's a ripoff. I don't know how much they were charging for ear piercings back then, but they weren't that expensive. So, who knows. So what's your name? Star. Oh, your parents too, huh? I was this close to being named Moonbeam or something like that. I'm Michael. Michael. <laughs> I like Michael. Michael's good. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you can see that the deck has been extended here. Goes out further, but then it cuts back into where the stairs are, where they ride down with the motorcycles. David and Star take off from here. You can see that Sun Shop sign is still pretty much the same as it was back in 1987. And the boys come riding down the stairs right here.
Now this scene here with the tree and the campfire was all shot at Warner Brothers Studios on a soundstage. So now we're in Palos Verdes, California, near the corner of Sea Cove Drive and Coast Sight Drive. It's along this area here that the boys drove the car to the peninsula behind me, which then led to the stairs down to the cave below. So now we're in front of the cave from the Lost Boys. This is also in Palos Verdes, California, just below the peak above where they do park the car in the film. However, there isn't any stairway that leads down to here. This is quite a tricky place to find. You have to go pretty far out of the way in the opposite direction and follow a trail down to this cave. However, what you can see is it is a lot bigger in real life than it looks like on the screen. But if you're a big fan, it's definitely the place to see. Let's go take a look inside. We're now inside the interior of the cave. Now you really don't see this in the film because they only show the outside of the cave. But once they go inside, it's actually a set at Warner Brothers Studios. The cave behind me, well, this is the real deal. You might see some pieces of wood and stuff from broken piers, or actually some of it might be some of the set dressing from the front of the cave when they shot the film. Who knows, but a lot of it is covered in bird shit. And that's the truth. And I can smell it. And you can't, and be thankful. Now this next location is very tricky. I'm going to do my best to explain to you exactly where it is. And that's Max's house. This is in Aptos, California. Not too far from Santa Cruz. Now I've taken this Google Earth image here to try to show you exactly where the house is. So the white line in the middle is where I believe the bridge used to be. The little square below it is where I believe the garage used to be. And the sort of rectangle up on the uh, above part is about where the house was. So picture, if you will, the driveway being where these two houses are, it kind of coming in here and wrapping around, and then the bridge going this way. Not supposed to go down here, but come all this way, you know. So this is what I think. Bridge started up there, probably right about there, and crossing over to here. Full credit to finding this location goes to Paul Holland's head. He's the guy who found this. Uh, once I was there and I spoke to some neighbors who actually lived there when the film was made, they told me exactly where the house used to be and how it was torn down after the earthquake damaged it so badly. Now, you might be saying, well, that bridge looks pretty far away from the street. Well, if you take a look at these screenshots, it does look like there was a big driveway and a lot of land in between this bridge and the houses in the background. Now, you see this house here behind Corey when he's reading his comic. It's down this path is to where Max's house used to be. Let's go take a look. To that house. Can I get you on camera telling me that? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but you said it was this way? Because yes. what I saw, because I was looking on like Google Earth, it looked like the house would have been yes. in kind of a lot behind this house. It's easier to see up here. The property changed after the earthquake. This house, yeah. that little house on the behind it, yes. that's 
the Lost Boys property. Okay. That's the, now that's not the house in the movie. That, yeah, yeah. They used a different right? house. Yeah. But the bridge that they used, that the dog was on, the yeah, white yeah. bridge, that bridge used to go from the right of that big tree at the end, uh -huh. across the gully, to this house that's next door to them. Oh. So that's where the bridge used to be. That fell all the way in here. So everything kind of changed it was six months after they made the movie. So oh. they were great. They used to give out candy to all oh, the kids wow. and stuff when they filmed. That's awesome. <laughs> right, take care. Now we're heading to Warner Brothers Studios. This is the back lot, and this is where the church was. They use the exterior of them pulling up. You really don't see the front of the church, but they use the interior of the church for the church scenes in the film. We're gonna go inside right now and take a look. And you'll see that it's changed quite a bit because this is very common with long-standing sets at studios that they renovate them and remodel them constantly. So obviously the stained glass window wasn't there, but the placement of the other two windows are the same. A lot of the woodwork and molding are still the same. Doors are obviously still the same. Right over here is where the holy water was. Right by this corner. But these are constantly changing inside studios. They never stay the same. They probably change monthly, depending on how often they're used. But one thing I want to point out is this bridge over here, which everybody assumes is the bridge from Lost Boys. It is not. This is not the bridge from Lost Boys. I will take you to the real bridge in just a moment. This is Santa Cruz. Yeah, they did shoot Lost Boys here. But that is not the Lost Boys Bridge. Let's leave one amusement park and head over by another. Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Boom. So, we are here today at the famous Lost Boys Bridge in Santa Clarita, California. Not in Santa Cruz like most people seem to think, because there is a bridge <laughs> right by the amusement park there. But this is the actual bridge where you guys shot that, right? It is, yeah. I haven't been out here since we did it. Which is crazy. When I was driving up, it, like, it all came flooding back. Even just going into the entrance to this park. I don't know how I did this when I was only two years old. That's bananas. <laughs> <laughs> So how long did you guys film out here? Do you remember? Um, well, most of my stuff was done during the course of one long night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the camp was, we, the, the shot was the, here. Actually, camera was mostly where we're standing. Mm -hmm. um, it's really funny, like memory, I was saying to you, because I remember this thing being like 300 feet in the air. <laughs> it's like just barely off the ground. <laughs> but, uh, but, but base camp was, uh, the camera was here, base camp was all up there. And um, most of our stuff was shot uh, on the approach to the bridge uh, from like all over in there. So we were like doing lead up stuff. And then Joel and Chapman, all those guys were basically set up about halfway along the bridge for that stuff, mm -hmm. for the actual shoot. All of our stuff hanging was done in the studio, yeah. right? So they rebuilt this on a stage and all of the, almost all of that stuff was all done on a stage with us. Like once we, once we dropped off, um, but as I remember, my drop off, my sort of goodbye, Michael, or whatever, my one of the two lines I have in the movie. <laughs> Which um, you delivered famously. <laughs> well, I've worked on it very, very hard. Because uh, it's all I had. Um, uh, that was done up there, obviously, into like a mat. Uh -huh. For the stunt, they just raised, they used cardboard boxes. Oh. which is interesting. They used to do that back in the day for certain stunts. Mm -hmm. And they just had a massive, like a 40, 50 foot tall pile of cardboard boxes that the stunt guys dropped into, um, which we all watched. It was really fun to watch so them do that. So that scene where the guys are dropping into the fog was yeah, shot here? that was shot here. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, that was I shot here going into, into cardboard boxes from the same vantage point that they'd shot all of our stuff. Um, so it was, that was, it was, I don't think it took us more than one night out here, but it was all night. And honestly, like everything with Lost Boys was super magical for every, I mean, it really was. It was a really fun set. And this sequence was really fun because it was beautiful. And it was just tons of lights. It was massive. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it was the 80s. Everything was so over the top. <laughs> so like That's Joel Schumacher. Exactly. Who's very yeah. over the top 80s. Exactly. So nowadays you'd shoot that scene and you'd have like probably one like, you know, camera and like some natural light and a little bit of whatever. I mean, this was huge crew, huge lights, trucks everywhere. We just took over this whole area. Um, and it was fun. It was like shooting a rock and roll concert or something. So when you did the, you, you dropped off, mm -hmm. what did, did they have a, like they a, had a, a riser. platform? Yeah, they just built a riser with like a mat on it. I just jumped down into that. It was just pretty standard. I mean, I think it was the same thing like in Death Wish 3, my death scene and that was exactly the same. <laughs> you know, sort of like fell over into like a, you know, a scaffold with a mat yeah. on it. Well, I mean, but even though it isn't as high as it looks in the film, it's still high when it you're is up high, there. Yeah. So yeah. was it all at all sketchy jumping off that onto something? No. No. No, it wasn't. It's I mean, I, I don't have a fear of high. I mean, I was really, I was one of those ballsy kids that would like jump off cliffs all the time. Mm. So like, I didn't have a, a height issue. Mm. Um, uh, but like, sort of walking along, it was pretty ropey up there. Like yeah. it was just bumpy, and and there was like old. Um, um, like railway ties yeah. and stuff like that and sort of walking along that was tricky and I know for the camera for for it was a hard very really really hard scene to shoot for Joel um, and it was one of the most stressful nights that he had on the shoot because um, I think we had less time to do it than he wanted and he told me well this is the story I mean, we ended up getting in a fight <laughs> <laughs> Do we tell. actually we actually got into a fight that night um over over if i remember correctly and i guess i'm somewhat glad he's not around to hear this anymore though we used to laugh about it afterwards um we got along incredibly well um but you know he's a cranky new yorker and i was a cranky new yorker uh and i think i took sort of basically you know i think at one point i told him i was just like a you know like a I was really nothing but like a wardrobe prop with fangs and assless chaps, you know, like uh, I think it was sort of, you know, wanting to find a character for this guy, not having really any dialogue to do it with. So really having to just physicalize everything in order to make him an actual individual, which was really important. Yeah. Not to stand out or anything, but literally just to have something to do, right, right. to have to play um, and not just sort of mope around and, and uh, and in this scene, I think that I was just having real, I was like, I was like, Joel, I was like, you want me to do all this stuff, but there's no dialogue. Here. Like, I have nothing to say. And he had asked me to do all this stuff in terms of like pulling Michael in and like riffing off of David and all this. And I was like, you know, that, that requires words, you yeah. know? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but I just want you to stick to the lines that are there. I was like, there really aren't any. So I think I added the lines there. I think once I added the lines there, I think Billy was like, I'd like to say something. And then Brooke was like, yeah, I also like, and so yeah. suddenly we all had these sort of goodbye lines as we yeah. jump off the thing. And Joel got really mad at me and uh, and took me aside. And you know, I'm a little little guy, relatively, and he's giant, right? Yeah. I just remember him like looking down at me, like sort of an admonishing dad going, this is the scene that made me want to make this movie. You know, this is the whole reason that we're here. This scene right now on this bridge, you know, and you're making this a fucking nightmare for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, we're having trouble with the shoot. We can't get a camera on these goddamn railroad ties. Blah, blah, blah. He was just like, went off. And we kind of looked at each other and realized it was, it was towards the end of the shoot. Hmm. We'd done all the Santa Cruz stuff already. I think we looked at each other. We just like started laughing. It's like, it was a hard fucking show you know, as much fun as it was. I and mean, we were just stressed out and tired. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good point. Why didn't they use that bridge in Santa Cruz, which looks almost identical to this one? Who knows? I mean, the movies are crazy, you know? It, it could have been a permitting issue, could have been a locations issue, could have been on someone's land that didn't want to play. I mean, there's so many dumb reasons yeah. when you're shooting why you can't do something. Um, they probably did try and couldn't. Uh, who knows? You I mean, know? this is a good isolated area. Yeah. And, and back then it wasn't a like a, a park with the you know they've made it all nice where bikers can ride across it and stuff i mean yeah. it was just an abandoned bridge at that point right yeah it was totally abandoned there was nothing out here obviously you have magic mountain over there but this is yeah. it was really kind of no man's land mm -hmm. we yeah, shot yeah. we shot most of the movie on location in santa cruz and then huh. we decamped down to la huh. after a break and shot on stages at warner brothers for yeah. the whole back end of the shoot um and I, I don't know uh, if this had to do with why we didn't shoot it in, in Santa Cruz, but I do know that part of the whole 
you know, conversation that I got into with Joel that night was that he had fought really hard to keep this scene in the movie. Hmm. And they did, even though the budget was pretty big, they did have budget issues all the way through, and there was all kinds of stuff they had to keep coming back on. Um, and uh, I know that he had fought to not lose this sequence uh, and, to and, and to not have it change at all from the way it had been written. And I find it interesting that, you know, directors, you know, like, what's the scene that sparked you to something? It's so yeah. personal. Um, and, like, why this scene? But I will say that um, when we were shooting it, when I, like, when I drove in that night, cause it was an all-night shoot, so I got here at night, um, and I sort of got out of my car, and I came up over the crest of this hill, and you just had, like I said, you had all these lights, and Chapman was such a master. I mean, he didn't use any light unnecessarily. You had all these lights, and, like, the whole, the magic of the way this thing, and, you know, I was like, okay, now I get it, right? Yeah. It was just so magical the way he, how evocative the sequence was and you could just tell Joel had it in his head yeah and he was just gonna do it and uh, and then you know this little punk ass kid from New York was gonna fuck it up for him. <laughs> but to your credit <laughs> you guys having those lines as you jump off is classic I mean yeah. it, 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 it without it that scene would be very different in my opinion right um, yeah it would have been what Joel wanted as opposed to <laughs> yeah well, it gave you guys some personality and, yeah exactly you know, yeah because you guys are oozing personality fashion wise yeah you gotta tell me you guys are just gonna be quiet the whole time well that was it yeah. you know like the the it was at the end towards the end of the shoot so by then like I'd done all of my stuff in Can't Santa fire Cruz me. I'd kept well I just kept my mouth shut you know yeah. and I was not un, I wasn't like an unhappy actor it was it was actually one of my favorite jobs I'd ever done. Um, I'd been acting for a while by then. So I was really happy and he and I got along really well and it was a really fun shoot. But I, it was like every scene I was like, okay, I come in, I sort of give the camera a look. I'm supposed to convey all this stuff without saying anything. Just fine, I mean, movies used to be silent. But by the time I got here, I was like, I can't just keep not saying anything. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, yeah. either these guys are mute or they should talk. Yeah. And that's basically what I said to Joel. I was like, look, Joel, like, I'm obviously not mute, so you got to let us talk. Now, as far as so. sets go, uh, the cave was all set Warner Brothers, yes. right? Um, was the house interior also a Both. set? Both? Okay. Yeah, the house was, there was a house, and then there was the, the house set. Um, almost all of it was done on a set. Yeah. Uh, uh, all that interior work was almost all done there. Obviously, Diane was up in Santa Cruz. Yeah. We shot with her up there for a bit. Um, she's in the video store and things like that on the mm -hmm. boardwalk. But uh, most of that stuff was done in L.A. because of all of the, the finale. So they built it in order to do that finale sequence. So you never even went to the real cave physically? Never. I, I, have nothing, I had nothing to shoot out there. Yeah. yeah, no. I went to that, even though I'm not in the house because I'm dead by then. I was around for all that, so I watched them shoot all that stuff. Mm. So, and obviously the, the, you know, the tunnels that I'm killed in, those were all on sort of co-joined stages. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was stage 12, I think, the really, really big one that Joel filled with flies that forever haunted Warner Brothers Studios that you couldn't see on the camera because it was so dark. <laughs> and then uh, they did shoot one sequence, the sequence when they're on the bikes, they go to the church to get the holy water. That yeah. was that church on the back lot there. Yeah. But other than that, it was all practical location. It was all practical location. Yeah, we were in Santa Cruz for a long time. And um, and did you know bulk of our stuff up there, and uh, it well, was really fun. Yeah, I was gonna say was that basically working on a in an amusement park on a yeah, it had to be kind of a good time. It was it was super rock and roll for us. Yeah. You know, we were vampires, so we literally shot at night. You yeah. know, I had I had blankets duct tape over my hotel windows, and uh, you know, I went to bed when the sun rose, and I got up when it went down, and I did that for a long time, and you get used to it. Um, and we were, you know, I'd get up, I'd go down to the boardwalk, I'd get on my motorcycle, and I would ride a motorcycle all night long, and then I'd go home. And it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we had, you know, thousands of people watching us every night. And, uh, you know, and Joel was a really, you know, he was a really magnanimous filmmaker. So it was a really kind of open-hearted, fun set to be on. And I think for the, he also was really open to the city. So um, there was, and Don, you know, Donner was involved and sort of the whole gang um, was very much aware that they were the circus rolling into town and they were very magnanimous towards the city. So we were just like all partying together, like us and like people in, in the town and kind of Lost Boys camp just kind of rolled in and took over. 
Um, I'd never experienced it. I mean, I'd been on sets and, and even the movies I did afterwards, I'd never experienced anything quite like it. So um, I think a lot, I mean, I think a lot of that is Joel, if not all of it was Joel. Well, let's go up there and take a sure. closer look at it. Yeah. So this is where you guys rode up. Yeah, yeah, minus all of this modern stuff here. Uh, it was just dirt. We rode up here, dropped our bikes here. Cameras were down there. All of the lights and everything shoving this way and base camp and everything else was over that way. Let's go see where you where you jumped off. So we did our walk like basically right up here and kind of came along this way. Uh, the camera was just sort of right behind you guys, kind of camped. There was the whole crew was, was right behind us. So and this was just right, I mean, you can see it. It's the ties that are under here now is what we had. Yeah. Um, and they had... Uh, we were walking sort of under those. There was just, and there wasn't anything under us. Um, yeah, just a little higher. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty, it is pretty high. And it was right around here. Yeah. Where the, I know where the hanging, they were hanging from off of this exactly. area. Exactly, yeah. So where exactly do you remember jumping off? And was this big pipe here and stuff? But um, it had to, it looks like it's old Yeah, I, I don't think it wasn't here. Um, but so much of this bridge looks different mm -hmm. than it did. So I don't, I don't exactly remember how that works. Um, but how low was the platform off of the... 10 feet. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, that's, this this thing is really the question, isn't it? Yeah, this giant-ass pipe. Mm -hmm. I wonder it wasn't here. You know, it might be new. Yeah. This pipe might be new. Yeah, because that obviously wouldn't have been here. Like, I don't have any recollection of that. I literally just did a jump right off this sucker between between the wood ties and the, and the outer support. That was it. Um, but almost the whole sequence was really just us walking from there to here. Yeah, this might actually have something to do with the, for water for the park. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because it yeah. wouldn't have made sense to have pipes on a train bridge. No, <laughs> and everything else looks exactly the same. I mean, like all this terrain, all of this is exactly the same. And look right there, Magic Mountain. Yep. <laughs> there was a lot less of it back then. But yeah, you can still see that tower. Yeah, the revolution. Yeah, and probably they, weren't getting any noise from there. At well, all. we were all night. We were here all night. Yeah. Like this was like by the time we got to our stuff, it was probably three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, you know, they were mostly setting up, and they, you can't really light night stuff during the day and know what you're getting. So, they didn't start working until sundown. Um, that's why Joel and I got cranky because we were both really tired and uh, and stressed out. He wanted the scene perfect. You know, he had it in his mind a, a certain way, and he wanted that thing shot exactly the way he had in his head. And you know what? That's how he was with the whole movie, and that's why the movie's good. Yeah. Because he was just uncompromising. He was like, he had that whole movie in his head. He just wanted to see it done. Well, I really appreciate you coming out here yeah, and reliving this. Yeah, it was actually really cool. I had like a really warm feeling when I pulled up because uh, this was a, there were two two of my favorite shoots to do. Um, happened to be on either end of the of the whole shoot. It was a really long shoot. Uh, my very first day was watching them shoot the the beach party sequence with Tim Capello, which was just magic to roll into that that carnival that they constructed. It was yeah. insane. Did you oil him up? Um, yes, I you demanded. Did, uh, that was in my contract. Okay, yeah, yeah I did all the oil. All the body oiling had to be done by me. Tim's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> so amazing. And then this thing was on the other end, and and it was just such a magical sequence to be part of. Um, and again, it's really just Joel. He had this crazy vision, and they were both exemplified by that. So, really fun, really, really fond memories of, of doing this. And I'm actually somewhat relieved that I actually did remember it. I was like, I'm going to get here, and I'm going to have no freaking recollection. <laughs> but it all came back. So. Well, now we just need to just jump off. Yeah, let's now. do it. Let's, yeah. get, let's get out of here. how I actually fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Awesome. I think that's, I think we're good.
So, let's go take a look inside. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, fuck! And down below was the cave. The lair of the Lost Boys. The La Casa de Las Boys. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> I went back, I pulled a muscle in my ribs. All right. Oh, that fucking hurt. Ow. God damn it. We have time. Ready? I got to pee real bad. <laughs> so I want to nail this one. You ready? Woo. Once inside, it was all a set. Because once they, not so good. I'm gonna do that again. Right now we're on, um, now we're, ah, uh, okay. Ah, I said, ah. This actual interior, I keep saying actual again and actually, let me do it, but I have to say it every once in a while, I think. Here we go. Now that is a lot of bird shit. Oh dear God, that is a ton. Oh, <laughs> yeah,